demonstrate how to use the Infinium Patient Monitor Omni 2. First, let's go over the general settings. Patient ID. Patient ID is required for the monitor to store patient data. By tapping on the top left corner, you will enter the Patient Info Setup menu. Here you can set up the patient info accordingly. Time and Date. By tapping on the top right corner, you will enter the Time Setup menu. Here, you can set up the time and date accordingly. Waveform Display Go to Setup Menu, Display Mode, and then select according to your preference. We have five display modes, 3-channel, 6-channel, 8-channel, large font, and OxyCRG. Now let's look at ECG Monitoring. By tapping on any ECG window, you will enter the ECG menu. Here you can change all available settings to fit your needs. The lead type option allows you to choose the ECG to be either 5 lead or 3 lead. When 3 lead is selected, the ECG lead option will be available for selection. Only the selected lead will be displayed. The display mode will also automatically be changed to a 3 channel display. When 5 lead is selected, the ECG lead option will not be available for selection since all leads are available to be displayed. The default display setting for Omni 2 is 6 channel display with 6 ECG waveform windows on the left. 1 ECG reading window, 1 NIBP reading window, and 1 temperature reading window are on the right. The ECG cascade option, when turned on, allows you to select the same lead to be displayed on the next waveform channel. Let's look at what you would do when you need to see other waveforms. Go to Setup menu and click Waveform Select. Now select the last two channels to display respiration and SpO2. Respiration is derived from ECG. Tapping on the RESP waveform or RESP reading window will enter the RESP setup menu. This setting can be changed according to the user's preference. Now let's look at SpO2 monitoring. Tapping on SpO2 reading or PLEF waveform window will enter the SpO2 setup menu. The setting can be changed according to the user's preference. Sensitivity mode and averaging time are only available if Massimo SpO2 is installed. Let's look at NIBP monitoring. By tapping on the NIBP window, you will enter the NIBP menu. Here you can change all available settings to fit your needs. We have four inflation modes to select. Manual mode only measures when you give a command. Auto mode measures automatically according to the set interval. Stat mode takes three measurements when you give a command. Average mode takes multiple measurements with the delay time set between each measurement and displays the average results from these measurements. Another set of measurements start according to the set interval. The inflation memory's default setting is off. When it's on, it remembers the previous measurement and adjusts the initial inflation accordingly. If the first reading is a high BP, it will inflate to a high pressure at the beginning of a second measurement. This feature is helpful when monitoring the same patient or on a patient group that has similar blood pressure conditions. The inflation pressure is the initial inflation pressure. The default is 180 and it can be set to a lower or a higher value depending on which one fits better in the clinical use. By tapping the NIBP list button, you will see the list of NIBP readings. Tapping on this button again will close this window. Now let's look at ETCO2 monitoring. ETCO2 is an upgradable feature. It's def is off, as are all the options. When it's unlocked, you'll see a CO2 type selected here. This will be either respironics or phase-in. To avoid confusion, the CO2 channel and respiration channel cannot be displayed at the same time. To display CO2, we will replace the respiration channel as CO2. On the CO2 channel, it shows the end tidal CO2 waveform, end tidal CO2 reading, inspired CO2 reading, and airway respiratory rate. Tapping anywhere on the CO2 channel will enter the CO2 setup menu. The setting can be changed according to the user's preference. 
Now let's take a look at printing. The print button activates the printer to print an 8 second real time waveform and reading. Printer settings are under the setup menu. The status will be connected if a printer is installed. All options will be available. When there is no printer installed, the status will be disconnected and no option will be available. Grid output, if on, puts a grid on the printed paper. Alarm print, if on, prints automatically when there is an alarm. Auto print, prints automatically based on the set interval. Parameter only, if on, prints no waveform, only the parameter chart. NIBP print, if on, prints automatically when there is an NIBP reading generated. Waveform 1, 2, and 3 are the selected waveforms to be printed. Now let's take a look at data reviewing. The trend button will bring up trend management. Interval can be set per the user's preference. The maximum recording time is 120 continuous hours. The interval will need to be set to 15 minutes in order to display 120 hours. Graphical trend shows the readings of the selected parameter in a graphical form. Tabular trend shows parameter readings in a table. Basic tabular trend includes all standard parameters. Optional parameters will be in their individual trend table. The print button will print out the trend table data. Alarm event shows the history of alarms of the selected parameters and 8 seconds of waveform at the moment of the alarm if available. Last waveform shows the last 8 seconds of the waveform of the selected parameter when entering trend management. Event list shows the list of standard parameter readings under each marked event. Recall button will bring up stored patients for the user to review their trend data. The monitor can store a maximum of 8 patients. Entering a ninth patient, however, will automatically delete the first patient. Some other settings under System Setup menu include Config Manager gives you the option to save the current configuration or load or delete a saved configuration. This is convenient when there are multiple users using the same monitor. They can set configurations to their own preference. HL7 feature is for connecting the monitor to a compatible EMR system. This is a password locked option available upon purchase. Drug calculation is a calculation feature. It'll calculate the dosage based on the information you put in. You'll start with selecting the patient type and the drug name. If the drug needed is not listed, you can select drug A, drug B, drug C, drug D, or drug E. Here, we'll use oxytocin as an example. Put in the weight. Here we use 70 kilograms as an example. Put in the total amount of the drug needed. We will use 10 units as an example. Put in the volume. Here we'll use 500 milliliters as an example. Put in the duration. We can use 20 hours as an example. You'll see all the related calculations have been populated. If you want to change one certain parameter, for example, the rate needs to be set at 10 milliliters per hour, then all numbers will be recalculated accordingly. Once the numbers are input, you can go to Titration Table. Here you can select the benchmark, the interval, and the dose type. We have selected dose type as dose per hour. This chart lists the value of rate and drip rate under different dosages per hour. Select page down to see more results. You can print this table for the record. Here is a sample printout of the first page. Hemodynamic calculation is also a calculation feature. It'll calculate most clinically relevant hemodynamic parameters. You only need to input all the required readings, then select View Output or Calculate to see the result. The numbers marked with yellow are the ones out of reference range. You can select the reference range to see the range. Select Print to print this table for the record. Here is a sample printout of the readings and their reference range. If you have done multiple calculations, you can check Calculation Review to see the history. This table can keep up to 12 records. On this page, you can select Back to exit or select Original Input to check the input or start a new calculation.